Now that we've looked at the basic transformations, I want to show you a couple of other options that we have for making transformations. These are a little bit different than what we looked at before. You can see that I have this object that I've created, this fish. And if I select this fish using the selection tool, the entire fish is going to be selected with a bounding box. This particular piece of artwork is actually made up of a bunch of different shapes, and you can see the outlines of these different shapes showing up. If I select with my selection tool, the entire thing becomes selected. If we use this tool, which is called the group selection tool, this will allow us to select any of the elements that have been grouped together. And in this case, nothing has been grouped. So I can actually select the individual components that I use to make up this particular piece of artwork. Finally, we have the direct selection tool. The direct selection tool also lets us affect the unique pieces, even if they've been grouped together. But in addition to being able to select the objects, we also have access to click on any of the anchor points and be able to modify the Bezier handles if necessary. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go back to the selection tool, which once again allows us to select the entire item. The transformation tool that I want to talk to you about first is the free transformation tool that is located right here or you can use the keyboard shortcut of E. When we click this particular tool, it's going to open up a sub panel, which has additional modifications that we can use when we use the free transformation. These modifiers are constrain, free transform, perspective distort, and free distort. So let's take a look at how these things work. As you know, when you're using the selection tool, you will activate a bounding box. And if you grab from any of the corner points of the bounding box and just drag, you're going to be unproportionately scaling the element. If you wanted to proportionately scale the element, you would hold down your shift key and then you can proportionately scale the element up and down. If you grab from one of the side angles, you're once again going to be unproportionately scaling the element. When we use the free transform tool, it gives us access to a bunch of different transforms. So we can actually rotate the element if we position the mouse in the outer corner, just like with the selection tool. We can scale the element if we get right on top of it. And this allows us to both unproportionately or if we hold the shift key, proportionately scale the element. And then we can go ahead and grab the element from the various sides. If we drag up and down on the side or top anchor points, it allows us to shear the element. So this is the equivalent of using the shear tool. I'm going to undo to get back to my original shape. Now what we can do is if we click the constrain icon, if I use my free transform and drag from the corner, I am proportionately scaling my element. I can no longer unproportionately scale the element from just the corner point. If I want to unproportionately scale the element, I would need to go to the top or the bottom, and then I could either squish the element in or squish it down. Once again, I'm just going to do undo by clicking command or control Z a few times. I'll go ahead and I'll uncheck constrain. Basically, free transform allows you to access all of the tools that we've looked at previously with one particular tool. You can move an item around. You can scale an item up or down. You can rotate an item or you can shear an item. If we move on to the perspective distort, this tool will allow us to create some sort of perspective to our element. With perspective distort, if I position my mouse in one of the corner areas of the artwork and I drag in, you can see how I'm squishing the upper part of the artwork in. If we drag out, it's as if the artwork is tipping towards us. And then I can also drag down. I'm going to undo. So knowing that you can add perspective to your element can help you to create the illusion that something is traveling towards you, for instance. 
I'm going to once again hit undo to get back to my flat artwork. Now let's look at the free distort tool. Free distort is going to allow us to have access to all of our regular tools, but if we grab from the corner points, we can really squish and scale the element in a number of ways. So it's as if my element is now three dimensional and I'm rotating it onto its side. You can see how we're taking this flat artwork and making it almost rotate in a more three dimensional type of plane. This will allow you to create some interesting types of effects to your artwork and you can take basic artwork and manipulate it in a number of ways to get a more perspective or distorted type of feel with your artwork. Clearly being able to transform in this way will give you a lot of options with your artwork. Once again, I'm going to click undo to just get back to my flat version of my anglerfish. The next tool that I want to show you is called the Puppet Warp Tool. This tool resides bundled with the Free Transform tool. So if I hold down on the Free Transform, the Puppet Tool is actually the default tool and the icon looks like a thumbtack. When we click this particular tool, you're going to see that my artwork gets overlaid with a mesh. In addition to the mesh, we also have these pins, which are a place where we can lock down certain areas of our artwork. So I'm going to go ahead and use my selection tool and simply click away. What I would like to do is I would like to modify the angler fish's light and stock. So I'm going to use my group selection tool and I'll click hold and drag so that I just have the light and the stock selected. Now I'm going to go to my puppet warp tool and as soon as I click this it's going to place the mesh on top of the artwork. The first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to decide where you want to put these pins. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select all of the pins and then we're just going to hit delete. When I do this it's going to remove the mesh from the shape. Now what I'll do is I'm going to place the pins where I want them to be. So we're going to place one right at the base. We're going to place one at the top of the arch and one down here at the base of the light. Now that I have the mesh points in place, I can click hold and drag and manipulate these mesh points. So rather than trying to redo this whole artwork, I have a way to kind of manipulate this artwork and you can see that it makes it kind of bendy. In addition to grabbing the mesh points, we can grab the outer dotted line that appears around the mesh points. And if we click, hold and drag here, we're able to kind of twist the mesh points around. This will give you the ability to have a lot more control over the particular artwork. So you can see how I'm able to not only grab and reposition any of the mesh points, but I can also kind of bend them and twirl them around. So the step is, is that you click on the mesh point, you can choose to actually move or manipulate the mesh point, or you can come to the dotted line. And when you see the triangle with the small arrow, you'll have the ability to grab this and move it around. So once you get the mesh all situated the way you want, you'll go back to your selection tool. Now when you modify a mesh point, you may change the stacking order of the elements. So previously, the light on the anglerfish was behind the fish's body. Now it's appearing in front. So what I'll do is I'll go back to my group selection tool. I'm going to click hold and drag to select this shape. And then I'm going to go to object, arrange, send to back. And this will send this particular shape behind the body of the fish. So using this tool, I have a very creative way in which I can modify my artwork and almost be able to mold it as if it was putty. I think you'll enjoy using the Puppet Warp tool to get really creative with just standard types of artwork within Illustrator.